we fully expect that uh, James continues to progress uh, the way that he has, that he'll be available to us tomorrow night. Um, Carolina is uh, obviously a tremendous program. They're having a great season. And when you watch him play on film, uh, knowing how, how Roy coaches, knowing how they play, and knowing what kind of season they had last year, they look even better to me right now. And they're, they're all a little bit older. Um, they're a little bit smarter. They're a little bit uh, more athletic. They're a little bit better skilled. You know, all the things that happen when you get an experienced team. And uh, they've added some new guys to what they do, but um, they're playing at a really, really high level. And uh, Joel Barry's playing at an extremely high level. So we're going to have seen, um, obviously, a great point guard in Frank Mason. And now we're getting ready to see another one. And not to mention what they have on the front line with Kennedy Meeks and Hicks and Bradley. And Justin Jackson is, is playing at a very high level. Uh, he's stronger uh, than what I remember from last year. His first step, I'm not sure. I haven't seen everybody play by any stretch of the imagination this year, but I haven't seen a better first step on anybody. And uh, their, their group, especially their starting five, is playing at an incredible level. So um, it's going to be... Uh, I don't want to call it a test. I mean, it's going to be a great challenge for us uh, to have the maturity to play a game like this, um, to not get caught up in the, uh, the hype and the pageantry of the game, but to get caught up in the execution uh, and the edge that you have to have in a game like this. And we have to play extremely smart. Um, we've got to take care of the ball. I mean, there's a lot of things that this game will come down to that are, that are, that are huge factors for both teams uh, that are constants in any big game, but the fact of the turnover battle and the rebounding battle and those things will be really, really huge in this game. So, go ahead. Rebounding in particular, I mean, I think you're both, you're two of the top teams in the country in offense rebounding percentage. What do they do well? I know they've got a ton of size, but what do they do well to really? They're there every time. I mean, they're there every time. They're, there's, there's, the, the thing about North Carolina is, is there's no deviating from what they do. They've got all players that can make plays. I mean, so they can, they can find ways to score, but they're going to have the weak side board covered every time, not 90% of the time, every time. Um, they're, going to, they're going to go through the paint the majority of the time, whether it's the post-up or, uh, or the drive. Uh, they're going to get the ball up the court quickly. They're going to defensive rebound. Their guards are going to rebound. So it, it's really, it's just the, the repetition and the consistency of doing it time and time and time again. And you've just got to make sure that you're there. And then you throw in the fact that they have so much talent and so much length and size and quickness doing it, and it makes it that much better. But that's the biggest thing I see. Are your guys kind of out there looking for revenge for what happened in March? Oh, I don't know if revenge is anything we talk about. I don't think that would be relevant you know, for the team. I think the bottom line is we want to play better. Uh, than what we played in that game. The guys that played in it and the new guys have got to step into it. Uh, it's two different teams and um, we're a lot younger and in my mind they're even better. So what we've got to do is we've got to be able to, uh, like I said, we've got to have the right kind of edge but we've got to play very smart. Uh, we can't get into a turnover game uh, with them and um, we, can't, we can't lose the rebounding battle with them that way if we're going to have a chance to win the game. But we've got to execute. We've got to execute. We don't need try to. We don't need to try the old saying of reinvent the wheel. We don't need to do that. We need to. We need to. We need to make sure we're playing smart. We're playing solid. We're not trying to make things that aren't there because we're not good enough to do that. We're not good enough to try to come out and create things. Uh, most teams aren't. We're certainly not when it comes to trying to create things that aren't there. Just trust the the next pass. Uh, get to the right spots. Have a sense of urgency on how they're going to run that break and stay true to what our game plan is. How much of a balance is required to, to both feed off the, you know, the energy, the environment, which will be pretty rocking tomorrow, but also not lose your mind on the stage? Well, it's, it's going to be different. I mean, it'll be completely different. It'll be the first time that these guys this season as a team have played in an environment like this. And it'll be the first time for the young guys. So it, 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 my greatest fear is keeping it simple. I mean, that, that's, that's the... Um, and in and, and dealing with the pressure uh, of, of their defense, not the pressure of, of how big our crowd is. We need, we need our crowd. I mean, let's, we, we, need, we need our crowd to really, really uh, be at that extreme high level like they, they are, and especially in a game like this. But we need, we're not going to be in a situation where we're playing to the crowd. We need to, we need to play for each other in the sense of, of how simple can we make it. And, and we're coming off a game 
where we, we did a lot of, we, we, we dealt with the pressure, got better with it, but we made simple plays. Now we're playing a different team, obviously. But we've got to stay with that mindset of simplicity is, is the whole key for us. You, you talked about it a little bit on the, the show last night, but what has James been able to do? You talked about being in the weight room. I think you said last night he went through the walkers. He's doing more. Yeah, he's just, he's healing. He's healing. So, I mean, he's, he's doing a little bit more every day. We didn't practice. Yesterday, we worked him out a little bit, and then he was better today, so hopefully he'll stay on top of that. Um, and, and I mean, I'm not saying it's it's 100%, but I mean, I mean, if he stays on the track that he's on right now, I think he's going to play. So I'm not trying to, it, it doesn't, I'm not trying to play the competitive game with Willie or Woney. I mean, our plan is that he will, but we got to wait and see how he is tomorrow, too. You said you thought they might be better than last March. What are they, what makes you They're say older. That? They're older. I think you can see it. You can see it the way they play. They're older. Um, they're playing a simple game. And I say that with all great respect. Um, they're playing exactly the way that he wants them to play. And, and um, I would think. I mean, just look at it from the outside. And, and I'm sure he, he, he might disagree. But, but, but uh, they've got the balance um, of, of the inside-outside. And, and they're so consistent uh, with, with the constants. Transition D, transition offense, ball reversal, rebounding. You know, they get it inside. So their skills are just better. I mean, they've had another year uh, under their belt. They played 40 games, played for the national championship. And you can, it's obvious that no complacency set into them in the summertime. I mean, they worked. I mean, that's, I'm not there, obviously, but I mean, there's no question that they did. Uh, and Barry's taken his game to a whole other level. There's no question about it. And, and Jackson has taken his to another level. And I think, I think Meeks and Hicks have. And Kenny Williams has stepped in for a guy that didn't do an awful lot last year and is, is doing quite a bit more this year. Nate Britt is playing like a senior. So, um, and, not, and Tony Bradley is probably leading them in rim runs. And so he, they, they, they've got a group of guys that are, that are obvious. They know what, what Roy wants done, and they're experienced enough to do it. And when they're not doing it as well, they're experienced enough to go back and get it, you know, get it back, get it back to, to base. And I think that's a sign of a very mature team. And I'm not, I don't know if they're better or if they're not. They just look older and more experienced to me, you know, when you watch them on film. Because certainly we saw a lot of them last year, not only in person, but on video. And uh, they miss Page, they miss Johnson, but they really have, there's, you don't see any slack being left there with them. He's, he's, he's a phenomenal coach. I mean, he's, he's every bit a Hall of Famer as anybody that's, that's in his league, in any league, you know, and he's done it time and time again, and he's got a system that's, that's tried and true, and he's, and he's got some experienced guys that know how to reel in the young guys when they're not maybe doing it the way that he wants it completely done. So I think, and that's why those guys are in minutes. And um, that's why Tony Bradley's playing at such a good rate for them, I think. So we're gonna have to play very, really well, I and mean, that's obvious. Tom, how concerning is North Carolina's three-point shooting? Last year they shot out of this world. And I know it's not the same team, but they're shooting about 40% again. But they got the, obviously uh, the strong inside game. How concerning is, is that aspect of it? Anytime you're giving a team open threes, it's concerning. So we've got to make sure that we just got to stay true to what we need to do defensively and, and do our very best with that. And uh, not try to, we can't be in an overhelp situation, but we can't do that against anybody. Uh, we've got to contain the dribble better. We've got to really be, uh, understand what we want to do defensively uh, in the half court, not just what we want to do in transition. Uh, they can get down the court and make some transition threes. So we've got to get back and take that away the best that we can. And no matter what we're doing defensively, we've got to be committed. Five guys have got to be doing it. And the greatest fear sometimes with any team, and even last year's team did this some, but once we figured out that all five guys were connected defensively, we got a lot better. And we're not there yet. I mean, you guys have seen it. We're not there yet. So, I mean, tomorrow we've got to really be locked in to not gambling, not risk taking. We gotta be aggressive, but we can't be a chance taking defense. And, and a lot of it's gonna come down to uh, how that game is officiated in the paint, right? And we've gotta make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a, in a foul situation as we continue to figure out in the game how the game is gonna be called. And, and um, that, that's a part of the process too when you're in November and December. How will that particular game be called and can you adjust to it? A little off topic, but what, what do you think of Schwarber being here, just being on here? I think it's great. We, we planned this since uh, mid-July, and uh, I reached out to him in mid-July when he was going through his rehab, and um, um, just talking to him, telling him 
you know, different things. I said, it would be really great if you came back. I said, why don't we do this game and we'll make you an honorary captain. And he's, and he's, and he's uh, finding the time and the way to do it. And I think it's going to be fantastic. You know, the baseball staff will be here. Tracy Smith is coming in, but he was already coming in before this. And uh, there'll be a lot of people here, obviously, the 81 team. But, but I think um, there'll be a couple incredible ovations tomorrow night, the 81 team, and certainly when Kyle Schwarber gets introduced before the game, and deservedly so, and deservedly so. Does the honorary captain do anything, or what is, like, what is he? He gets tickets. He's coming to practice. Gets to hang out. Gets his expenses paid. I get. I don't know if we. I think we do for him. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a gift for him or two. So trade for some autographs. Coach, North Carolina grabs nearly forty-seven percent of available offensive rebounds. Just what makes him so effective on the offensive line? They go every time. They go every time, and they cover the weak side board every time. And, and if we had clips to show our guys where they don't, we'd show them. But we haven't found any in the seven games that they've played. I mean, they're there every time. And um, we've got to make sure that we're there too, right? So it's, it's, it's the weak side board, it's the guard rebounding, it's the follow-ups um, because they're pretty quick-footed. You know, I think in, in hence what makes it different, I think Meeks looks much more athletic this year. Hicks is, is a very good athlete. Bradley is big and wide and long and can run and jump. And, and Jackson is... This, you know, he was always a great athlete, but the strength that I think he's, I don't know what his, I don't know his measurements, you know, what he's gained strength-wise, but the first step is, is, um, it's crazy. I mean, it really is. I mean, I don't have a better word. I mean, he's, he's got a great first step. And so when he gets, not only on the dribble, but when he gets a chance to do that to the boards, then that, that, that puts you behind too. So we got to be, we got to be unbelievably good on the backboards when we're blocking out. And we got offensive rebounds.